everything we learned just about now. All right, today is Tuesday, September 24th, 2013. It is 11.54 in the a.m. Uh, we are interviewing um, Edward Burke. Berg. 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 Did I say Berg? Berg. That's right in front of me, too. At the Illinois State Library. Um, and you are at how your age? 83. 83? Okay, good. Um, so you were born in, don't let me do the math. Divern, Illinois. In what year? 1929. Awesome. Um, I'm Bill Eckelbarger, and I'll be the interviewer. Um, uh, Mr. Berg, could you state for the recording what war and branch of service you served <clears throat> in? Korean War, 19 United States Marine Corps. Um, what was your rank? Uh, Staff Sergeant. Uh, okay, where did you serve? Um, you just said where you served. Um, did you get immersed in the culture where you were stationed? Did, I, did you become uh, involved in the culture in any way, shape, or form? No. No? No. I, no. I, Candy bars to the kids, cigarettes, anything to no. the children, nothing like that? Um, did you bring any mementos back with you? Uh, souvenirs, just pictures, more or less, just camera pictures is all. And what was your job or assignment? <clears throat> I was a, uh, I was a word in Korea with First Marine Air Wing. Wow. Volunteered for that. Wow. What we do, we go, we fly up to an air base, which was airplanes were there, and a few. We'd set up the base. We'd have a. Uh, Utilities and utility section. We set up the generators, the water system, the showers, and all that. Then we put up the tents. I don't know, they were big tents, eight, nine man tents. We'd set all of them up and get everything going, and we'd move on up to another base. And uh, we'd, I was about three or four bases. We got set up then at the last one. I was over there a year, exactly a year. Which year was it? You don't mind me asking, what year were you there? A 19, uh, 51, 52. Okay, all right. Um, you were not a POW. No. No. <laughs> um, uh, were you awarded any medals or citations? Uh, no, just, I went, took a correspondence school through the Marine Corps. The, Carpenter course, which I passed, got a certificate for, and automobile mechanics. I got a certificate for it. And the NCO school mm -hmm. went through it. Uh, I got a certificate for it. And outside of that, I just got the Korean medal and uh, good conduct medal. And I think it's the pres presidential unit citation is, a, is just a, a medal. And then I was, uh, the rifle range was a uh, Marksman, I think, and that, that's all I got. Have you been back there since for any of the? No, I, well, it's a couple <clears throat> of years ago, I was stationed at Camp of June. Oh, yeah. That's where I was. Got a boot camp, went there for uh, engineer school, graduated. That's the neighbor. I volunteered for first year in Airwing. Got out of, out of there and went back to Camp of June, the second engineer battalion. And that's where I stayed down there a year, and that's where I was discharged from, Camp of June. Hmm. Um, <laughs> one question is, can you share any battle planning with us? But No, not really. no. Um, um, I, didn't, I didn't hear any. Uh, when we got there, I don't forget what base. We went, to, we was at Seoul. We went to, took it, me and three or four other guys had a couple of Jeeps, and we drove through so, and that's when we took it back over. Mm. And yeah, off the distance, I could hear the big guns booming, and that's, but it was, so it was just a wreck then. We drove down through to some of the street just, to, but it's, uh, I don't know exactly when we took it back from the, the North, North Koreans, but. I'm going to pause because I think my. All right, part two with uh, Mr. Berg. Um, I'm not going to change the title. Um, 
How did you get along with the officers and fellow soldiers? Wonderful. Really? Couldn't ask for a better bunch of guys I was with. The officers were, were great. Over in Korea and back home, it was good. Hmm. I never had a problem. With there, there wasn't one officer that no, everybody just... No, no, no. Huh? They keep your nose clean and they don't bother you. That's what I always thought. You go through, you know, through boot camp, they say it's rough. It's rough. Well, I was four marked. I said, if that drill instructor, he's got a job to do it, I know damn well I can keep up with him. So that, you know, when no problem whatsoever. But um, it's, uh, it's amazing. What now boot camp is different. You know, you dropped your rifle. I don't know what to do today, but you dropped your rifles, you know, in formations and like that. That night, you had five rifles laying in your army cot. We stayed in tents. They laid five rifles and then put a shield, and you slept on that for the whole night. Mm -hmm. And that, that was it. So the next time you, you learn, you won't drop it. <laughs> so, you know, that's. But the, the kids get caught smoking. So, you know, what they had smoking lamp, smoke after child. Smoking lamps lit, so you smoke. But then a lot of times it snakes smoke and they get caught. Well, they roll up beside the tent and everybody get around and give him a cigar, put a bucket over his head and a blanket. He says, I want to see smoke come out. <laughs> Just talk about a couple of sick guys. <laughs> ah, that, that was, and that was it. They didn't, no more smoking for them. I would do it. Yeah. It's, um, the next question, I guess, I got the question. Yeah. Um, did you feel pressure, stress, or anxiety? No, no. I didn't think so. <laughs> just did your job and... Did what? You just did your job and... Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Um, did you keep a diary? Uh, no, 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 I didn't. Any of the guys keep a diary? Uh, not that I know of, not that I know of. Um, Ah, can you tell me a couple of your most memorable experiences? Uh, well, I don't want to go into that. <laughs> That's on R&R. &R. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, wait. Now, R&R &R in Korea or R&R &R stateside? In Korea. <laughs> well, yeah, we got, we got, you know, they fly us back, flew us back to Japan. At uh, Atami, Atami Air Force Base in Kobe, Japan. That's where we fly in there. Then we we are on our own. They'd have uh, barracks there to stay in, and then you, you went wherever you wanted to go. So, you know, we just bum around for three or four days, drink, and just see the country. So. But then Korea is, uh, we, had the, we had access to Jeep. We had my, own, had my own Jeep, and two or three of us take a drive out through the country, you know, and just see, and it's amazing how these Korean people carry that, all that stuff on their back, you know, big sacks of stuff, walk for miles, that stuff. And we had, uh, over there we had one, he's, he's a captain, and he was a pilot, and he left, we had a place there we could, uh, get the shotguns, we could hunt. And you know, they're hunting out there. There's a lot of pheasants over there in Korea, where's that? And we, me and him and a couple of other guys, we'd check out shotguns. And we'd go, uh, uh, go quail hunting and pheasant hunting. Pheasants are not, and we have these Korean boys flush them out, you know, and we'd shoot them, come back and cook and fix it up for us. And he loved that, he loved that shoot that pheasants at the captain. He was a real good, good fella. And uh, just riding around near the third country, we had, you know, an hour or so to kill. We'd just drive. And then we'd take our M1, we'd go out in the mountain, shoot off a couple of boxes, of, you know, rounds, you know, that had all the shells we could shoot. Just go out the mountain, just rather well, shoot that M1. That's a very accurate rifle. It's, and uh, that's, <clears throat> that's about it. We just had a 
Well, we had Crins working for us. They'd do a lot of work for us. They'd build a quantity of that. And then we'd take uh, the ammo boxes, uh, what ammunition, to where bombs come in. They were about that long and about that wide of a bomb. And they'd take them boxes apart, and then we'd they'd fix that on, on the quantity over. Instead of putting metal on, we'd put that board up. And then Crins would they'd come to work to have a a sack that have a hammer, a plane, a wood plane that was looked like you take a two before, and you know you've seen them wood a wood plane. That's what they have in a hammer and a saw, and maybe a chisel. And that was what they used. And they, I tell you, and they'd uh, they could work. They could take that saw. They could. Oh, it was just amazing what them people. And they had no trouble with them or nothing. And during time, come down and sit down, squat, eat your rice. You can smell that rice a uh, block away, fish. And that's, uh, then they'd go back to work. Quitting, they'd quit in time, they'd, they'd march in. Go to, they'd be maybe a mile from town, they'd walk home. And then we had an, uh, a boy, a uh, house boy, that he'd, take, he'd make her beds. And, do our laundry. Well, we, 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 he'd take the laundry home and have his mom do, you know, wash the clothes and everything. So that was uh, worked out pretty good. We <laughs> give him give him some money, you know, and gave him every clothes. You know, I I sent home for some uh, clothes, jeans and stuff. Mom sent them to me, and we had we had to hold that kid down and put them pants on him and dress him because he didn't want that. Look, but he got him on why he was all right then. <laughs> so it's um then time to come home we went on uh USS General Weagle uh troop ship going over. It took us uh what was it, twelve, twelve or thirteen days. Now that that was something. I didn't I got probably first day or so I was a little seasick. Everybody wanted to get up and get down in the bunks, right? Three stories down there. It, was, it got pretty hot. But uh, got over there and, and uh, disembarked. And then we come back come back on the ship. And it was uh, the same guys laying in that bunk for two days, never get up. They were, they were green. They were sick. Was, mm -hmm. They were thrown up over the side. And, uh, it's, well, I just a lot of them can't take it, you know. A ship going up and down, up and down. And so then we come in, the Frisco come on East Golden Gate Bridge and docked at uh, Treasure Island out there. And that's where we disembarked. And that was uh, pretty close to Christmas time, I think it was. Well, I don't know if it was or not. But anyhow, I got, we got a pass, I think it was a 10-day pass, and I flew home. Then I got went bought a car, drove it down. I went back to Camp of June, stayed down there for about a year, second engineer battalion. And then we built a, <coughs> well, they called it timber timber belt bridge. That was a, a stream probably from here to that wall again farther. And we would <coughs> would you drive posts down through there and then we had a power a power driver with it, you know, drive them post and we had to frame it up and put the deck on then put that uh, power driver on top, then move out, drive some more and build build it across. Uh four or five years ago we drove down through it's still standing. It's so that was one of our projects we had to do it. Wow. Uh, it was a D, uh, D company, a company of men. We had a lieutenant. We got uh, them guys had you know job to do, and that worked all together. A lot of them liked jumping. It was eight, eight, ten feet of water. A lot of them jumped in there, get hot, swim, and you know and just move right along. We got built. They had a they had a ribbon cutting ceremony there when they opened it up. It's, uh, it's something to do, mostly a lot of schooling, you know, doing all that. So come, uh, I was, I made staff sergeant overseas. I don't know 
I made corporal, made sergeant. I don't hey, you made sergeant. Okay, I'll take it. I ain't gonna refuse it. And the first thing I took it. That's overseas career where I got made staff sergeant and come home and as I got ready to get out, I took the I took the test, take the test for tech sergeant, and I passed step. But uh, I'm, I'm getting out. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. At the end there, I'm not uh, prejudiced or anything, but the Marine Corps was always volunteer. Well, by the time I got out, two or four months before I got, they, uh, <coughs> they had a lot of Puerto Ricans. They drafted into the Marine Corps. And you couldn't do nothing with them. So that I said, hell, I'm going to put up with this. And that's when I got out. So, you know, it's, I don't know. There's this, maybe in, uh, during a World War II or something, maybe they did draft them in the Marine Corps, but uh, then uh, I, didn't, I didn't know they was doing that. And then they come and find out. Was, and then these guys didn't want to be in there. What are you going to do with them? That's, we had some colored guys in there. Hell, you couldn't ask for colored people, you know. They'd, they'd be tell them to do something. They done it. And they got along good. They brought slop shoot, drink beer, and but I made staff though. It made you feel like Marine Corps. You got four years. You got a hash mark. When well, you go in there, your green's got a staff sergeant. You go in there, and guys like that. There, and you got guys in there with a uh, staff sergeant, maybe. Three, twelve, fifteen years in staff sergeant. Well, you figure, well, they got in trouble somewhere. They got busted a couple of times. You go in there and your staff sergeant, no hash marks. You know, makes <laughs> people are looking at you. It makes you kind of feel you. You're kind of funny, you know. <laughs> a lot of times I'd go in, you, know, you could wear civilian clothes then, so I could, you know, dress civilian, but there was just something that. You know, the guys, all these, all these hash marks and their staff sergeant. You know, well, that's maybe 10, 15 years in. But, you know, they, they get talking, a lot of guys, they got busted, reduced in rank. So, oh, that's, that's their fault. So, that's about it. That's it. Wow. And you got no more. Yeah. And you got no hash marks. <laughs> no. Nope. Three years is. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, were you able to stay in touch with your family? Oh, yeah. 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 I got, uh, well, when I was home uh, back in Camp of June, I had a car. I could, it's a thousand miles, I think, from from where I lived, uh, Die Vernon to Camp of June. And I'd bring a couple guys home with me. You know, we lived uh, within 10 miles here. And we'd, we'd take a 72 hour. We'd leave Friday night. Had to come back Friday, Saturday, be back Monday morning at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. We'd go home, say hi to mom, dad, and eat, eat a chow. You know, and just stay home there for a while and jump in the car and go back. Mm -hmm. We could do that, you know. And, and then, <clears throat> then for a while there, I would drive to uh, D.C., Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. I'd take five guys, I don't know, 20 bucks a piece. And I'd take them to D.C. They'd get trained and go to New Jersey, New York, somewhere, you know. Hmm. Long weekend, they'd come back and get in the car and come back. As long as you're home by Brevely, next morning, it'd be all right. So never missed the day. Always, always got back in time. So no, ne never had any problems in the Marine Corps. And it's just, you, know, you keep your nose clean. You know, so. A lot of them, you know, get in trouble in jail and all that. It's, but uh, I had a good time. I was all I enjoyed every bit of it. So that's, that's about it. It's, uh, oh, here's one. Um, did you have something special for good luck? No, no. <laughs> no. Um, plenty of supplies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And I, well, I'm I'm Catholic, and we all always overseas. They had mass outside or in place. We always always had mass. Very seldom missed uh, 
Sunday Mass. That was, you know, you believe in something while well, you stay by it. Yeah. That's. Um, what was the food like? Talk a little bit about food. Food? Uh, Marine Corps has got the best food I ever ate. I mean, it is wonderful. Really? Yes, sir. I cannot. Okay, I want to hear about this. So, the favorite thing to eat? Breakfast, sausage, pancakes, and just cereal. And the stand in the well, you made staff sergeant. You got you just walked in, sat down, and brought the food, you know, table, family style. Mm -hmm. But you list man, you stood in line, but I cannot blame blame anything on the food. The food to go on in the ship now was different. That was um poor um, greasy pork chops. Man, I don't know. It was grease and that's what you know, a lot of them got sick on that. And, it was, that was, chow wasn't very good. But overseas, that steak, all, and had good food. They had a good mess hall, always had good food. Good cereal, fruit, all that. It's, I can't, I can't complain about the food. It was, you know, a lot of them say that the food ain't worth the darn, but I, I liked every bit of it. It's, but there was one thing that, SOS wasn't very good. <laughs> you know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, that, that was kind of bad, but he ate it, so it wasn't. That's, uh, so that's, that's about it. That's good food. Okay, we talked a little bit about R&R. &R. There's more questions about R&R. &R. Yeah. Yeah, um, oh, here we go. There, were there any entertainers that came to the units? Uh, yeah, but I can't. They was in uh, Korea there. Let's see. I think it. But I can't remember who they were. That can't. I don't. I was thinking Bob Hope was on. I was thinking Bob Hope was about that time. Yeah, yeah I think he might have been. I don't know. It was just so crowded at that one time. I, but I, I can't remember on that. But I know they had a couple of some gal singers and the band and everything. And, uh, well, airfields there, but that I don't know what they, who they were or anything. See, that's what I get for not writing things down. That's, you know, you could, and the older you get, to, you know, you forget a little bit. So that's that's about it. Well, um, did you travel all year in the service? You said you went to. You went to Kobe. Did you ever make it to Tokyo? Uh, I didn't go. I went to Osaka. Osaka? Yeah. They took a train to Osaka, just travel around, just mingle with the people, you know, eat, eat your food and drink a little acai beer, a Nippon beer. I don't know. They, they just chilled it. It was about half warm, you know. It wasn't real cold. All their beer was, you might get drink it. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not real warm. But, not real cold either. Just I like cold beer, you know, drinking, but, uh, but whiskey or anything I never did. Never drink. Well, we overseas. Well, <coughs> we had this officer. Uh, he was a tech sergeant. He was an electrician, but he didn't want. He worked in the officers' mess. That's what he wanted to work. He worked there only, and he get uh, he'd bring steaks into the or a tent there. We get that old pot belly stove going and mess gear and fry us up steak. Done that a couple of times and you smell of that mess sort he come by and he looked in and said, Hey, I see you guys are eating pretty good. He said, Yes sir, we are <laughs> went on and he would get the steak and give them to the officers. And the officer would give me a fifth of whiskey. You know, the officers are flying to Japan all the time. They bring bring their booze back, hmm. and uh, we always always had a bottle of whiskey sitting on our table. If you want to drink, why well, you drink it with uh, uh, grapefruit juice? We get you had a grapefruit juice, you know. And get out of your tin cup and pour some in, pour a shot in there, and drink it. But I, you know, drink some now and then. But I was a beer drinker. I, 
like my beer. So. How was the beer? I know it was lukewarm, but how was it? Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. Really? When I first <laughs> kind of caught a deal, which this first air base, I think we just stayed there for a couple nights, me and two other guys. Uh, they had an ice, why? I don't know why they had an ice machine, ice making machine. And it was right along the main road there. And we were working out an ice machine. And the army would come by in their trucks. And then somebody found out we had ice and they had beer, warm beer. So they just gave us two cases of beer. We'd give them all the ice they wanted. We had, they would take that beer and put it in there and we'd trade back and forth. And we had good cold beer. That was, Oh, but he was there about a week. Then we moved on. They took us on up. That was that was something. Boy, I don't know how the word got out that had had ice machine there. Golly, they kind of it stopped them. So if you go overseas, huh? If you go overseas, then get yourself an ice machine. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> now where they got it from, I have no idea. It was, it's good thing. It was great big. It was a big box, wooden box thing, and it boy, it was full of. Ice. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Hate to leave that place. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of these questions were made up by by kids in high school. Okay, so bear with me. Yeah. Uh, what were some of the? Did you ever like pull pranks on anybody or jokes on anybody? Uh, no. Well, the only couple times we double sheeted that. Now, how in the heck, let's I got to take that sheet somehow and double it back uh, when you you got to get in and get your feet and you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, the sheet was folded back and you put your rip it or you couldn't get your feet straightened out the thing. They call it double sheet, double sheet, but I don't know how, I know a couple guys done it to a couple of the guys there, but how they got that sheet back and held it tight. When they get in, a lot of times, well, I think one guy, he put his foot, it ripped, ripped right through the sheet. You know, it was real thin, but that's, uh, that's no, we didn't, didn't pull no pranks on. That's about the only thing I know that they done. Double I, sheeting. Yeah, double. No, wait, so before they got to bed or when they were laying in bed? No, when, when they get ready to go to bed. We did, did do this. In the daytime, you know, make all the bed up. Okay. At bedtime, they'd get in there, and then the boy had somebody, oh, God, you know, cuss. <laughs> yeah, they knew who in the hell it was, but uh, that's, uh, that happened. That, what happens when we was in boot camp down there, the guys would do that. But they, it was, that's, a, that's about it, Tony. Okay. There's uh, the rest was about discharge, which you kind of talked about already. And you were in, when, well, you you your discharge was what year? Uh, Fifty three. Fifty three. Yeah, went in September, got out in September. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. right. Pretty close to the same day. It was the thirteenth or sixteenth of September when I went in, and when I got out. So and there was four four of us from Diver and that enlisted. One, well. Draft was I was ready to be drafted, so four of us uh, joined in. And one guy, <clears throat> he had his draft notes. He went to the mailbox that day. He was going to leave, and he didn't pick it up. He said, "I'm going to leave it there." He went up with us. So I left here at Springfield, went to Chicago, and got up there and got in there. And uh, officer said, uh, "Anybody get your draft notes?" He raised his hand. They shipped him back to Die Vernon. He went in the army. <laughs> they mm -hmm. wouldn't take him, and you know, you got had your draft notes. So I don't know why, but it, he would, they sent him back, and that's three. Then we went in together, and we stayed in boot camp together. So then well, one guy, he becomes state policeman. The other guy, he was, I don't know what he done, but he passed away. So there's. Uh, I kind of lost track of a lot of my buddies, so you know, years. But I had, I had a couple good, good buddies, you know, good, good buddies, buddy around with and everything. In fact, I had one. 
They in, lived in uh, New, Jer New York. And we went up near up New Jersey there. My son was up there. And we went, I went and looked him up. We, we spent two or three days with him. And we were down at Camp for June together. And he was, he was a Leo Jellin, it was his thing. I don't know, I never, he, he was a good, good friend. We was just, just like that. We always buddy around together. And that's. What'd you do right after you got out? About the first few weeks. <clears throat> well, I got out in September the 13th or 15th. And uh, I was out about three weeks. I lived out on the farm with the dad was farming him. And uh, you know he only had 160 acres. So I uh, neighbor down there. He worked for uh, Bark Lubin up here when they was a big operator, and he was truck driver. And he come down to us. There's a contractor looking for a guy to work, needs a guy to work. So his name was M.A. Clayton. So I went up, I found out where he was working out here in South Lawn, he's laying block. And I went up and talked to him and told him, I just got out of service, I'd like to have a job. He says, come to work tomorrow. I worked uh, about 19 years for him. And that was, uh, we built, he built through, we built 60, 70 houses a year. And he got where he, he got a plumber's license, or he had a plumber, got his plumber's license, had an electrician, had his license. And we done everything, he had a back uh, cat, dug his own basements. We done everything. Drywall, had his own drywall, his own painters. And I run, the, run his job for him. And then he kind of, Got down, and he built a big shop out here on the, over on Cedar, and put a big pit. He'd done a lot of work for Alice Chalmers out here to take these big tracks, and he had to dip them down in uh, paint. He had a big pit down in the building, and he dipped down and drip, and then take it over. He's contracting from uh, Alice Chalmers out here, hmm. and he'd done that. And, then he just got where he got to go and he, kind of, he said, give it up. So that's when I, I built a spec house when I was working for him. And then I, just, I sold it and I went to Park Lube and I'd done all the ceramic tile work and uh, you know, all the remodeling. So of course now I went doing all the working for myself. And I'd get laid from them, you know, buy the material from them. And, uh, Ed Crell, well, his friend, uh, he worked for Frank Siciliano. You know, big Siciliano, big, built a uh, big, big building out there on Stevens Drive, a big two story uh, hotel plaza. Yeah. Okay, he built his boy. So uh, Ed Crell worked for him and he, he quit. And, I, Ed needs some help, and I helped him for singing. I said, yeah, let's go together. And we worked, uh, but in 18, 19 years together, he did, we'd build a spec house. I'd take one, pay the bills. He'd take it out. We never signed a contract to shake hands. Never had a bit of bond for 18 years. Mm -hmm. We worked, we worked. We stopped, and went over, drank a beer, go, go get a beer. And, you know, and we had, uh, we'd stand the down. We'd sub a lot, we'd have it framed up. And then we'd go in, put siding on it, uh, do the odd and then trim it all out, paint it and everything. And we'd sell it or we'd done a lot of contract work, you know, we signed a contract for so much money. Never, never had a problem. <laughs> never had a, nowadays uh, people are just, um, it's a, it's a rat race today. Uh, and, you know, you have, back then it was good, Good prices, you know. Today it's cost so much. Uh, I don't know what it's. It's, it's hard to figure out today because so much going on. Materials aren't what they were. Yeah, 
Yeah, they're not, you know, it's, I mean, it's, uh, and you did, you know, years of when tresses come out, you know, before, back then, you cut, cut a roof by hand. You used a, you used a frame and square, and you got, the house was 24, four foot wide, you got a 412 pitch, you got your square, and took half of that, 412, measured it off, cut it, and put two together, try it, work, and you cut them all that way. But then, you know, now trust, you can put them up and you put the roof on time to cut one out, you know, so that's, it's, and everything. We never had an air gun. Every, we used to hammer and nail. Everything, beep, 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 it's, you know, but that's the way you get it done. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's, I've seen all that stuff. I built a house for my daughter out of Coke Mill out there, story. A story, two-story house, and I had to guy, uh, Pete Giacomini, he's a big builder here, I had him framed up for him, and I was walking in the doorway, just put the sheeting on, guy the beep, 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 I looked up there, well, about every other one's missing a choice. Yeah. Hey, I come down here, I want to show you something. Guy, he crawled off the roof, guy, look up, I said, what the hell's them nails doing up there? Oh, he got mad. He wouldn't talk to him for two days. I said, get your bass back up there and do it right. So that's, <laughs> that's you know, that's. I know. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Cool. I know exactly. I'm not going to go into it. I'm exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. Um, did you use the GI Bill for anything? No. For, no. Because you had all your training. I mean, you already. Yeah. 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 Um, you still friends with people? Oh yeah. You said you so okay. Oh yeah. 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 You said lost some of them. You lost uh, contact with. But. Yeah, but I, I, I don't. I, I haven't. Any service guys I haven't contacted. For. Mm. I don't know. Uh, I got a lot of addresses, but I haven't called them. You know, it's been so long ago. I just kind of let it go. But, yeah. So. Um, been to any reunions? Uh, Other than this? No, no, <laughs> no. Um, now here's one. How has your service and experiences affected your life? It's kind of a big question. I don't know. <clears throat> Seemed like you're a little more, you had more responsibility. Seemed to feel like what I was. 19, 19 when I joined, I don't see my three years, you kind of grow up a little bit. You got more responsibility and you see you don't, you know, you gotta, you gotta go ahead. That's, you know, if you're going to mount anything, you just gotta keep plugging along and just, you know, you can't just sit back and watch the world go by. I, but it's, uh, I've had, I've had a good life. Got a good, good marriage. Four kids. And four kids. Four kids. That's grandkids. It. I got the uh, grandkids and about great grand, <laughs> two great grand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just wow. And that's uh, and they're all they're all. I got two boys that live in Die Vernon, one in Texarkana, and one in uh, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Mm. So they're all, they're all doing good. There you go. You can't ask for more than that. No, you can't. You really can't. Um, okay, here's the last one. And you said something about this earlier, but the, we weren't recording. <laughs> um, did your military experience um, influence your thinking about war and military in general? And you were saying something about Vietnam. Yeah. Well, the more you read... Today, I don't uh, just damn politics. It's politics. Politics today. What's going to happen over there? I don't know what you think. Or what, but that Obama, they'll get him out of there and get somebody in the dust and you know, know something. I don't. I don't know. That's for. But you're saying about the Middle East and how they've been fighting for you're right, yeah. And, I, and uh, yeah, 
immigrants, illegal Indian, mm -hmm. you know, coming from Mexico, across the border. <clears throat> I cannot figure why we got all these army bases along there, soldiers in them. Okay, this uh, third, second battalion, we're going to take us, we're going out on bivouac. Or we're going to stay for 30 days. We're going to set up camp along that border. They got all, this, you know, they got border guards. But what are they? 10, 15, 20 miles apart? Set them up so if you go along that border, make camp, you know, let them guys bivouac like you do. You go out in the boondocks and bivouac, all right? They get training out there and patrol that border. That's, that's what I think should be done. Now they got them. Now we got today's paper yesterday how many million illegal immigrants we got. And what's that's one thing that gets and uh, Syria and all that place over there. Stay out of it, stay. I mean, if they really need help, well, what the hell? These other, or well, maybe France and Britain are kind of working there, but you got these other countries. They should all, all protest, you know, go against the object. I don't know. Hmm. But uh, the politics today is, I don't know what's, what's going to happen. Obamacare, what well, you don't know. I have good insurance. I can't. Medicare, as you know, you pay, you pay them. Everybody pays in, you know, well, if you get sources, you know, you, some of it goes to Medicare, Social Security, I don't know, it's 90, 95 hours a month, they take out every, and they've been doing it for years, so, but now it's going to happen. <coughs> These you know, immigrants, it's illegal, they're going to end up getting, getting hospitalization, all that. And we're paying for it, so now I, I don't know. We can't do it. We, we got people here that need to take care of our own people first. That's what I, I think. I, don't, I may be wrong, but I can't listen to Radio Wife. She got that radio on all day. She knows everything about Obamacare and all this and all these representatives talking and Huckabee and all that. You know, she listen, I don't. And her and my son, they get together and they, they go on. I, just, I don't I don't get involved in it. And they got to say the same thing. It's, it's, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I got insurance. She pays good insurance. Well, it's just uh, quadruple bypass. I don't know, pretty close to $200,000. And she's still in rehab, so you know she got good insurance. Of course, it's, she's paying for it. I try to give my insurance. I got health alliance. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's states got a lot. State workers got it. Yeah, got some, that's one of the options. And uh, I have no. Uh, I pay hundred dollars a month. I don't have uh, prescription or anything, but I go. I got a twenty dollar copay. Pay it. I fell off the roof and hurt my shoulder here. To, Overnight, the hospital to go his x rays is $19,000. Cost me 20 bucks. So, you know, I can't I can't complain. But I don't know. It's, uh, but the description's what's getting, you know, if you got drugs to take, it's, uh, it's hard to believe. And people don't, you know, there's a lot of them take drugs. Every, Six, seven hundred dollars a month just for medicine. I'm going to get. I don't know if get any better or not. Let's wait and see. That's all I can do. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know the same thing. You you yeah. work for state. You yeah. know that's it. That's all I can do. Yeah, it's uh, all it's, for the best. Uh, yeah, the state. Yeah, and these people. That uh, do business with them, hell, they're they're quitting. They can't get paid. They're just, you know, three or four months behind. And you can't. I don't think you can. It's hard to operate that way. But they'll uh, spend a couple of, a couple of dollars on some copper doors over here. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I, what you said about the military bases being so close to the borders, and. 
you know, I've never heard anybody come up with that. I've never heard that solution. And you know, I, I like I, you say it out, out, out loud. It's like, that's that's well, the really know. practical idea. I, I don't, I don't, didn't say how close they were. I yeah, mean, I'm close. sure they got uh, out there. They got bases there. Oh, yeah. And uh, what's this? Well, I'll say Fort Bragg. Now that's a story. Fort Leonard Wood. It's uh, all them soldiers down there. All right, they got a company or battalion and. Take them out to bivouac for now. That's an they, interesting idea. Yeah, you, know, you know, put your tents up. Uh, get you got your mess, uh, your food wagon and all that. They do it out in bivouac for a week or so at a time. We did it. Marine Corps went out there and got you, you slept in your, your little tent you made and you know you done your done your stuff. But and let them go out and put, patrol. They see. To me, if immigrants are going to cry and see all these people along there, they're going to they're going to think about twice coming over. I think now that's the way I look at it. I think yeah, if everybody comes up, you know, let's talk about that. I said that, and they, a lot of them agree. It should, they should do it. I've never heard that. You know, them, I don't know what. So that's it. Well, it's nice meeting you. Okay. And thank you for your time. That okay. was that was delightful. Okay. Are we done now? We are.